Welcome, friends. You are listening to the Mind Body Alchemy podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Miramontes. This is where intuition meets education in the realms of spirituality, fitness, mindset, and more, all to create lasting change. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the podcast. It is officially Desire Map Planner season. This is the planner that I have used for several years because a few years back, it really transformed my life and I haven't been without it since. Now, this is more than just a planner. I use it for my daily to-do list, of course. But what I really love about it is that it gives me the opportunity to reflect daily. There are some journal prompts in here on your body and wellness, on devotion, gratitude, and why you're grateful, which I think is pretty powerful. But beyond that, it brings me back to my core desired feelings, the list of words that I come up with every year to ensure that the decisions that I'm making each and every day bring me back to feeling the way that I really want to feel. Of course, it helps that it is so beautiful. The cover art is gorgeous. The writing is gorgeous. So if you want one, make sure you check out the show notes. I will leave a link for you to order yours there. This podcast today is going to be about pleasure and setting goals in a pleasurable way. This planner has helped me to live a more pleasure-filled life, and I want the same for you. So without further ado, here we go. So today we are going to talk all about pleasure and reaching your goals. I really think that using your intuition and using how you feel as a primary driver in how you make your decisions every day is huge in your quality of life, your well-being, and I think that it's not necessary to always be suffering for your goals. I think that you can reach your goals, I think you can go after your goals and still source all sorts of pleasure along the way and use that pleasure as part of your intuition. Use that pleasure as a way to actually go after your goals and sort of as your dial mover, right? Because if we're always setting these goals from a place of scarcity, if we're always setting these goals, especially when it comes to physique goals or money goals, right? It's always from this place of like not enoughness. Like who says you're not enough? Who says that you need more of this money or more of these things or more of an acceptable body or a certain image. Somebody has taught us that. Somebody has these expectations that they've put on us. And so we come from this sort of panicky less than place. We come from this place of like, I need to be like my neighbor or I need to be like all the people in this fitness community. Uh, Those of us who are really immersed in the fitness community, it's full on our Instagram, all of our social media channels, We see it oftentimes in our friend circles and it's really easy to kind of get caught up in that comparison trap where we don't feel too good about our bodies because there's always going to be somebody richer, somebody better, somebody fitter, somebody that can lift more, somebody that's, you know, walking around with a better vein in their bicep, whatever it is, it's really easy to compare and that sends us down this trap of just feeling freaking miserable all the time. I think fitness should feel fun. I think that there should be a wellness component to it. I think that if it doesn't improve your well-being and you're only doing it as a way to change the way that your body looks and the the way that your body looks to other people, it's not going to last. Most people that lose the weight gain it back. Why? Because their transformation was not deep enough. The meaning was not deep enough. The stretch from their brain from... I want to change to, I'm going to do this set of behaviors to change to, I now own this change, I own this new body, this new body image, whatever, is not strong enough to hold you to keeping your transformation because you had to do so many sufferable things in order to get there. So if you can't use any kind of pleasure to get to where you want to go, it's just not going to last. So I think pleasure is super important. That was a really long introduction of for me to just say how important pleasure is. If you have been following me for a long time, you know that I'm really big on core desired feelings. I set intentions every year. Um, I write my intention down every single day and I look at it and I try really hard to live it. I write down my core desired feelings every single day and I try really hard to make sure that my 
feelings, the way that I want to show up in the world, the decisions that I make are reflective of, does that make me feel aligned? Does it make me feel connection? Does it make me feel open? Do I feel bliss? How do I really feel? And if I don't bring those feelings into my decision making, most of the time, it doesn't work out the way I want it to. Or if I do ask myself those questions, I get a much more aligned answer. So determining how you wanna feel is just one way to use your inner compass on bringing pleasure in. So that's kind of a start. One of the things that I deal with a lot or that I, that I see a lot with my clients and the people I surround myself with is that they're always putting themselves last. Putting themselves last or not not putting themselves in the priority list at all. They won't show up at the gym, they don't want to uh, prep their food or they can't prep their food or you know they're not taking time to maybe meditate or stretch or do any of the things that really feel good in their body because that's selfish. Women especially really struggle in these areas of like selfishness and guilt and sort of beating yourself up. So you have these two camps living inside your own brain. One of them is you should be doing more for yourself. You should be showing up. You should be going to the gym. You should be working out. You should have a better body, but you should also have a clean house and provide for your family and do all of these shoulds. And then the other camp is when you show up at the gym, you should be home doing laundry. You should be taking care of your husband and you really can't balance them both out. So when you go, okay, this is how I wanna show up in my life. This is how I wanna feel. What is going to bring me pleasure? Take a moment, deep breath, hold all those shoulds right here in your heart center and just go, what's gonna bring pleasure? what's going to bring wholeness and what is really going to be the cost associated with this decision if you go to the gym because you want to take care of your body because you come from this place of abundance and wholeness and this is what i do to take care of my body because my body serves me every single day what is really the cost somebody might complain let them complain. I mean, does it really, do the complaints really cause any damage or is it just kind of emotional and mental turmoil that you choose to make it mean something about you, right? You choose to make that complaint mean that you didn't show up for your family that day or that you didn't do enough to take care of your home life or whatever, that you're selfish for choosing the gym. But if you really understand that our bodies age, our bodies break down and we really need to take care of them, is it really selfish to take care of your body? Is it really selfish to go in and spend 30 minutes getting your heart rate up to take care of your health and well being? Is it really selfish to take some time to just clear your head so that you can focus on the tasks at hand? Or is it more selfish to go, you know what? I'm unwilling to have this conflict with the people in my life that make me feel bad for putting myself first. I'm unwilling to do the things that need to be done in order to take care of myself. So I'm gonna avoid the conflict by not taking care of myself. And then 10 years down the road, you start getting all these aches and pains and you just can't sleep like you used to and you just can't move like you used to and you just can't take care of things. The energy level is sluggish and low and your hormones are declining. Which one really is the more selfish behavior? I think that putting yourself first is one of the least selfish things that you can do. Are you gonna be able to do it all the time? Hell no, you cannot put yourself first every single day, every single moment, especially if you're a wife, a mom, a caretaker, a boss, any of those things that have like super high responsibility. But it really should be, or an option that's available to you is to try it on as a core value. I'm going to prioritize my pleasure and my well being and just see what happens. Start making your decisions from a place of abundance and see. Just try it out. Eventually your family's probably gonna pipe down. Eventually those responsibilities that aren't getting done are gonna get done. One way or another, things are gonna get done and if they don't, no one is gonna die. Everybody's gonna be just fine, but you're gonna be happier. And that's, <laughs> that's really the point, right? You're going to feel better. You get one life. Living it in, from a place of abundance and pleasure is super important. Counting your wins. Not everything is about making decisions that just make you happy, right? I'm not telling you to go fill up your credit card because that's not actually going to bring you long-term pleasure. That's not going to make you feel that core desired feeling of, say, security. 
that's just going to bring you a lot of stress once the bill comes. So we've got to look at pleasure as the long game. What is ultimately going to add to my life instead of take away? If we're looking at the gym and our healthy habits as always taking something away from our life, that's not pleasureful. That's not pleasure enhancing. So we have to look at what can I add here without causing too much stress, without causing too much resistance. Oftentimes when we take on a new goal, a new fitness goal, say you want to lose weight and you take it on from a place of, I need to change everything. I've completely let myself go. I need to change everything. I'm going to buy all the vegetables. I'm going to change my whole diet. I'm going to go to the gym every single day. And you know, you start naming off 75 things that you're going to do. Your brain will go, yeah, let's do this until you do it. <laughs> and then it's like, this is uncomfortable and this is gross and I don't like it. And it's going to start coming up with all the reasons why you should fail because you have in the past, because this is too hard, because it takes too much time, because it's, you know, whatever. So we have to take our brain and go, this is super important to me and I love it. And it's not that hard, right? We can do hard things. That's okay. We can do hard things. We should do hard things and challenge ourselves. But if you take your brain from zero to a hundred, you're much less likely to have any kind of success versus bringing, taking your brain from zero to one or zero to two. Then your brain's going to go, oh, I can do this. This is kind of fun. This is new. We can focus on this. This is important. And it's not stealing our joy. Once you start doing things that steal all of your joy, your brain goes to work and says, this is not survival. We're going to die. Even though you know you're not going to die, your brain thinks you're going to die and it'll start telling you that you're going to die. Then you stop doing the things that are important to you and valuable. So rewiring your brain to focus on your wins is huge in bringing pleasure into your daily strategy. The way that the brain works is it likes to add things like we just talked about instead of take away. It likes to have new things. It's like shiny new objects, right? We like to have our brain reaffirm that things are good and abundant and um, we don't actually have to go out and do anything from a place of scarcity. So things as simple as, you know, it's like the gold star sort of mentality if you put a gold star or if you use a checklist everybody loves to check off a checklist it's just like this silly little reward however it doesn't matter if the reward is silly or not your brain recognizes that as a win so counting your wins and recognizing them every single day no matter how small they are will hardwire your brain to seek more of that reward system sort of like we do with food right when we reward ourselves with food our brain automatically associates that reward system with food. So when we feel like we need an upper, when we need a boost, we turn to food because we've habitually rewarded ourselves in that way. Same system, add something to your life that is a reward and it's just behavioral. It's just brain science, right? There's actually a habit tracker you can download. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a tree and you plant a seed and as you do your habits, this tree grows. And one of its main things is to keep you off of your cell phone for too many hours a day. And so as you're on your phone, if you're on your phone for more hours than you set, you'll get a notification that your tree is gonna die. And since nobody wants to kill a tree, you're just like, oh shoot, well I better put down my phone. But it's so rewarding to watch that little tree grow so you stay off your phone so that you can grow your own tree. And it's just, your you know, it's so silly, so ridiculous, but your brain lives for this shit. So if we can tell our brain, hey, this is abundant, this is good, this is fun, this is, you know, make it into a game, you're much more likely to stick to your habits and move forward in a way that brings pleasure and reward and your brain will stop making everything so damn uncomfortable. It'll stop making change so uncomfortable. So rewiring your brain to focus on the positives not talking about spiritual bypassing here, not talking about not feeling your negative feelings, not talking about going, oh, everything is fine, love and light and, you know, just, you know, shout it out to the universe, whatever, that kind of stuff. We're not talking about that. We're really talking about a scientific approach to rewarding your brain in a way that helps you to continue a behavior that you've set out to do that will support your goals and ultimately bring you to that place of uh, fulfilled core desired feelings. So defining your why. This is really an overused concept in a lot of ways. Everybody's like, what's your why? 
why do you want this? Because I want smaller pants. But that's not really why, right? That can't hold you. And so, you know, when you start defining your why, sometimes you have to ask why five or six times. Well, why do you want smaller pants? So that I can shop at normal stores. Well, why do you want to shop at normal stores? You know, maybe because I, you know, want to start dating. Why do you want to start dating? Because I want to have a family. You know, there's your why. Why are you doing this? Because you want to have a family. Now, do I believe that you have to lose weight in order to find the love of your life and have a family? No, that's just an example of how you can go down this ladder of what is really living deep in your psyche that's driving you to keep setting this goal over and over again that you maybe haven't been able to reach or attain because your why isn't strong enough, it's not deep enough, it's not pleasurable enough, it doesn't bring you any happiness. Instead, you're coming from a place of focusing on the things you have to do in order to get the goal instead of the things you're gonna get out of the goal. So really focusing on how you're going to feel and then trying to feel that way along the way. So maybe you're gonna feel awesome when you get to buy the smaller jeans. How can you feel awesome today? Can you buy a pair of jeans that fit really well so you don't have to feel so uncomfortable in your jeans while you're in the process of it? Can you maybe find little drops of pleasure in your daily life that brings that feeling of just excitement and happiness about your process into how you're going about this so that you can't, so that you're not just looking at, well, I have to eat more vegetables. Well, I have to exercise. Well, I have to do these things. And that have to gets to be very heavy and it weighs you down. And that's where people really end up quitting. Even once they've seen success, they quit on themselves because the have to's are way too heavy, way too taxing, way too much struggle in order to continue on. Identifying your obstacles is another one. If you look at your goal from a bird's eye view, you can kind of see, especially if you've tried this before, what's going to get in your way? What are you up against? What are your big rocks that are really going to be a struggle for you? And can you try to make it easy and fun and abundant now before you face them? Maybe you understand that in order to lose weight, hunger is a thing can't escape it. If you want to lose some weight, you are going to be hungry, period. And maybe you come from an, a background or environment where you've always rewarded and comforted yourself with food. And therefore, when you're hungry and you're uncomfortable, the first thing that you do is reach for food. And you know this, maybe you can come up with something really pleasurable to put in that behavior's place to make it impossible for you to eat as a way of comfort. Maybe it's just so damn pleasurable. Fill your life up with so many awesome things that food no longer needs to fill that gap. Find some things that really, really bring you pleasure. Fill your life up with all of those things. Try to make sure that you are doing like a preemptive strategy to bring all of that fun and light and life and happiness into your daily activities so that you don't have that chance to get into that scarcity mindset so that you don't get that chance to feel like food is the only source of pleasure that you have in your life. If food is your main source of pleasure, your main source of comfort, your main source of um, happiness, if that's what you're really looking forward to day in and day out, and believe me, I understand, but if that's your main source of pleasure, you're always gonna struggle. You're always, always, always gonna struggle. So finding ways to bring other sources of pleasure into your life. And I am not talking about your job. I am not talking about your kids. Love your kids. I know you love your kids. Everybody loves their kids, cool. But they bring just as much stress as they do pleasure. So let's not, use, let's not put all that on them, okay? <laughs> there has to be some other things in your life that bring you happiness, joy, pleasure, satisfaction, so that your dopamine response this is another brain thing. We want to feel rewarded, feel safe, feel happy, so that they don't feel so low that they need an immediate source of pleasure. And an immediate, easy source of pleasure almost always comes from food because it's fast, it's available, it's abundant, and it works really well. 
just being aware that that is what's happening inside your brain, you can go, okay, how else can I get a dopamine spike right now? And you can understand that it's a false pleasure even. You can go, okay, you know what? I'm feeling really kind of bummed out right now. I need something. This is my dopamine telling me that life sucks. What can I do to change that that isn't going to take me further from my goals and make me feel like steaming hot garbage? So changing your attitude toward certain behaviors and thoughts and things like that. What if you chose not to look at hunger like it was a negative thing? What if you reframed it and said, hunger means fat loss? And this is kind of a dangerous game, right? Because hunger does mean fat loss. You do have to have a little bit of that hunger in order to see success. But I teach my clients that they should be experiencing hunger 30 to 60 minutes before they eat and that's it. I don't want you to go, oh, hunger means fat loss. I'm gonna stretch it four or five or six hours, okay? That's not the road we're going down because that is the opposite of pleasure. That is the opposite of satisfaction. That is deprivation and restriction and you're going to overcompensate eventually. The idea is to have a balanced relationship with the things that make you happy, the things that make you feel good and to put your health and well-being at the forefront of this goal. If the only driver is a smaller pair of pants, it's not gonna stick. If you start feeling really a lot of benefits from your health and well-being, your energy every day, you're well-fed, you're well-energized, the foods that you eat, the meal sizes that you have are abundant, they're tasty, all of that kind of stuff, then you're less likely to overeat. But if you start going, okay, hunger means fat loss, so I'm gonna be hungry for three or four hours, that's not an abundance mindset. That's a restrictive mindset and it's a panic mode and eventually your body will start pushing panic buttons and you will overeat every single time, whether it's at night, you'll start night eating, you'll start weekend eating, you'll start binging around the holidays and celebrations. You're gonna stand and torture yourself at the dessert table where you're just like, fine, I'll just have one. And before you know it, you're kind of hiding in the closet eating 47 of the, your favorite treat because that mindset is dangerous. So reframe the things that you know are gonna be negative into positives, understand that they're part of the process, try to put a pleasurable spin on them, try to make this as easy and wonderful as possible for you. If four days a week of training feels like torture, but two days a week of training is neutral and three days a week of yoga feels like life, do that because you're gonna to stick to that schedule and you're gonna get tons of benefits from that. Which leads me to my next thing, trading up your workouts. So one of the big things that I've always taught is that if you're following a program, you're training. And if you're not following a program and you're just in the gym lifting weights or you're just going to classes or whatever, you're exercising different than training. I still stand behind that logically, right? You are going to get better results from a physique standpoint, likely if you follow a set of rules in your programming, if it's a well-built program and it's designed to give you the result that you want. However, if it is not pleasurable, at least in some way, if you're not getting benefit from it to the point where you're skipping workouts, and you don't wanna show up for yourself and the idea of going to the gym just makes you wanna cry and you sit out in your car for 15 minutes scrolling Instagram before you go in because you just need that dopamine hit that social media gives you in order to function in your life, your workouts probably need to be dialed back in intensity, dialed back in frequency, or switched altogether to something that feels Fun. Sometimes you just want to feel athletic. There's nothing wrong with exercising for health. There is nothing wrong with exercising for pleasure. In fact, that's kind of the point. I'm all for a good solid training program, but I'm also all for things being in seasons and reasons and having a really good motivation behind the kind of training that you're doing. If Zumba is your jam, Zumba. If being an iron priestess is your jam, lift whatever it is that makes you happy, do more of that because you're gonna show up every day and you're gonna get tons of results from just the consistency of it. Now, if you give it, you know, three, four, five, six months and 
you're doing all of these things for pleasure and you go, okay, you know what? Now I'm consistent. Now my brain's not putting up resistance. I'm going to the workout all the time. I get the cognitive benefits. My head is clear. I feel like it's my time. All of these things are wonderful, but now I want to reach this specific goal that only this specific training will give me. Cool. Start finding ways to add that in and know that, yeah, maybe you're going to have to kind of buck up and go, okay, I don't really love this kind of training, but my why is deep enough. My, my intrinsic motivation for the end result is deep enough and big enough that I'm not going to make myself suffer through it. I'm going to reframe my attitude and make sure that I'm making it pleasurable, making it enjoyable, start tracking things, start rewarding your brain with um, habit trackers or some sort of, like I said, marble jar, gold stars, I don't care what it is, make your brain enjoy it, make your brain feel rewarded by it so that you go, okay, this is really fun and it's not that hard and it's not miserable and I don't have to do everything that feels like garbage. Releasing your goal. I talked a little bit about this in the beginning where I talked about how sometimes when you are immersed in fitness as a lifestyle, you tend to fill up your Instagram feeds with fitness. You tend to fill up your different environment with fitness, that kind of thing. And so you start comparing and you start thinking that you need that thing. I could think of an example and it feels like I'm judging, but I promise you I'm not judging. It's just kind of what I've observed. I feel like everybody should have autonomy over their body and do whatever makes them feel happy with their bodies. But we are in this world right now where we're looking at the Kim Kardashians of the world who is, you know, literally filling up her butt with fillers and things like that. And it's, it's abnormal anatomy, right? And so I'm seeing that personally a lot in the gym, women that are walking around with very, very clearly enhanced booties. And because that's not all up on my Instagram feed, I recognize that as a standout thing. It's strange to my eyes. My brain looks at it and goes immediately toward that's fake and I know it. But if that's all that's on your Instagram feed, your brain is going to accept that as normal, desirable and, and usual. Like it just gets used to it and then it starts planting the seed that that is acceptable. So if you had never seen that before, it would be just like, holy cow. But if you see it all the time, it's not that weird. My point here is that make sure that your goal that you're setting is really about enhancing your life and bringing you pleasure. And it's not about what you're surrounding yourself and immersing yourself with that has influenced what you feel you have to do or what you feel you need to have in order to be happy. Same thing with money. If you're living in a neighborhood or an area where everybody is making all this money, we see this in small towns with MLM marketing. Everybody's signing up. So all of a sudden you see, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith and this person and the Johnsons and whatever, all of them are making $10,000 or $15,000 a month. And you're just like, that's the solution to my problem for sure. And it becomes sort of like this saturated lifestyle that you immerse yourself with when in reality you were happy with your house and your car and everything was just wonderful before you were happy just kind of doing the daily hustle. But somebody else showed you something new and you immersed yourself in that culture or behavior or set of behaviors and all of a sudden that became what your brain wanted to move toward. So just do a double check and go, is this really my goal or is my goal influenced heavily by what I'm surrounded with, the content that I'm absorbing, everything that I'm consuming, and is this healthy and good for me or is it just me trying to keep up with the Joneses on accident, right? It happens on accident. It doesn't necessarily happen on purpose releasing the goal and then focusing on your dial movers. So anything that you can look at that goes, okay, this is the goal that I have. This is, this is sort of the end result that I want. What are the things that I can focus on that are going to be my big dial movers? Instead of overwhelming yourself with all the little details, should I take this supplement or shouldn't I? Should I drink three liters of water or should I drink four? There are little tiny things. These are all little tiny things. Most of them are not gonna make much difference. What are the big dial movers that are going to take me from point A to point B? And how can I make those pleasurable? So 
if the big dial mover is that you have a goal to get fit, but you don't like exercise, then trying to force yourself to lift weights when you hate lifting weights or your gym is really crowded and you don't like the crowd that is the time you have to go, you can go, okay, how can I make exercise more pleasurable? Maybe it's going for a walk, and I know, going for a walk. But seriously, walking is super good for you. It's great for your nervous system, lowers your, lowers your stress level, it burns calories, it creates a habit that you can then bridge because you can show up, if you're gonna show up five days a week to go for a walk, whereas you set a goal to go three days to the gym and you won't even go one because you hate it so bad, what's gonna give you better results? What's gonna move that needle? What's gonna move that, that dial just a little bit? That comes from a place of pleasure. That comes from a place of really desiring showing up every day because you love what you do, because it feels good to you. And then you can stretch it. We know what it takes to hustle. And so some of these things don't feel like that big a deal to us. But maybe your secretary in your office has no history of any of that. Do you think she wants to come and like jump into your lifestyle or does that feel like flipping her entire world upside down? You can apply that same thought process to yourself and go, okay, what do I really wanna do? And how can I take a baby step? How can I inch myself forward without torturing myself and making myself miserable? Same thing for her, right? Maybe a walk is just huge, it's huge. And eventually she might be a rock star trainee that goes you know, three to five times a week and starts putting on muscle and whatever, but not until she's taken her first steps, not until she's gone for a walk and set the habit that she is an exerciser and she did it in a pleasurable way. I love the gym. I love the way that it makes me feel. I have a really good relationship with the iron and chalk and heavy weights and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's my happy, but sometimes it's cool just to go, you know what? I'm going to release all that for a minute and just have some fun because things like dance and things like community and things like movement, you see it with CrossFit, especially. Do you think that CrossFit is successful because it puts out a bunch of hard bodies? It puts out just as many, if not more, injuries as it does hard bodies, right? Nobody wants to sign up for injury, but the sense of community brings so much pleasure to people, that feeling of belonging, that feeling of wanting to show up every day just to be around people is enormous. It's a huge part of their brand. Think about that. People are successful with CrossFit, not necessarily because it's such an amazing program, but simply because it's a sense of community, it's a sense of belonging, and that dopamine spike in our brain, that pleasure center in our brain, has people cheering them on, has people bringing them in and saying, you're part of our community because you do this. You can see it from a mile away, almost always. It's like, ah, oh, that one's a CrossFitter. You're my people, that kind of thing. And so when you start looking for ways to bring in a sense of community, a sense of alignment, a sense of pleasure and happiness, then you're more likely to stick with your goals. You're more likely to enjoy your goals. And again, circling all the way back, that is what this is all about. It has to have some form of pleasure. Unless you are a freaking robot, I am not. Can't do it. Can't do the robot thing. I have to have some kind of reward, mental reward, physical reward, all of it. I have to have the pleasure in order for me to keep going. And when you consciously start to look for the pleasure and cultivate the pleasure, it gets to be that much more fun to stick to. You challenge yourself more, you stretch yourself a little further and you start to reach your goals because it really matters because you're enjoying it because it's fun. So just to kind of recap, goal setting does not have to be miserable. Suffering is 100% in your ability to change. It is optional. You get to decide how much you suffer. Yes, you are going to struggle sometimes, but when you come from a place of, you know what, it's just not that serious. It's just not that freaking serious. We're going to have a good time. I'm doing this for my well-being and not because I must have abs by this date. I'm just, I'm just here to live my life. I'm just here to have a good time. I'm here to be someone who takes care of her body. I'm here to be someone who shows up for herself and exercises and, and does the thing, right? Come from that place and it just feels better. You just show up in a better state of mind. You get better workouts. And when you don't get a good workout or you miss 
a workout or you go on vacation or something happens, your life is disrupted, you don't beat yourself up and start listing all the ways you suck because it's just like, oh, I haven't been having enough fun lately. I'm gonna go have some more fun. This too shall pass. I'm gonna allow the negative feelings, let them sit there, whatever, they have to happen. We all experience them, but you know that pleasure is on the other side of that, not willpower, because willpower runs out. It's not reliable, it doesn't work for us. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys will find ways to write down some things that really bring you pleasure, some ways that maybe you could modify your process, your goal setting, goal achieving process. What, what do you really love about what you're already doing? What is the primary driver behind it? And is it a pleasure driven behavior or is it from a place of scarcity and fear and not enoughness? And how can we shift those things? Um, yeah, I wanna know the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. I'm here to support you and hopefully you guys got something out of this, okay? So you guys have an awesome week and goodbye.